now I have to win. There, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. So I know what that does. I know the pressure that that put on, on, on us as a team, as, as an organization. But what other pressure did you want? What other pressure mm -hmm. we want? We want to go out there. We want to target an outback. Is that your way of saying this championship a bust for this Lakers team this year? It got to be. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it have to be. Like, it, there's, there's no... There's no plan around with that. That was from my interview earlier today on First Take with Carmelo Anthony. I always feel lucky to be able to speak with basketball legends like that brother right there. I'll tell you something else, too. The Los Angeles Lakers are lucky to have him on their roster this season. LeBron and the Lakers should be down on their hands and knees thanking God they got Carmelo Anthony in the Lakers uniform. Because even at age 37, Carmelo has a lot of good basketball left in him. He showed that the last two years in Portland, after most everyone wrote him off an entire season out of the NBA, by the way, Carmelo is as good a scorer off the bench as there is in the league as far as I'm concerned. He's got that kind of potential, and he's hungry too. Wants to win. He joined the Lakers to win. Could have got more money elsewhere. Probably more playing time elsewhere too. But right now, this is about the chip. It's a damn shame that a player of Carmelo Anthony's caliber has never even played in an NBA Finals. Man won a national title in college, won a whole drawer full of Olympic gold medals, but has never been in the NBA Finals. This year, playing with LeBron, AD, and Russell Westbrook, this year is his best chance to make it happen. Maybe his last chance to make it happen. I know I'm rooting for the brother. Always had love for my man, Melo. i tell you this, though. Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, even with Anthony Davis, Carmelo going to get some open shots now. Unlike he's ever had before. And he's capable of making them. Look out. Brooklyn, L.A. Lakers, Brooklyn. That's really what we all want. It's what we clamoring for. Ain't no need to lie about it. Ain't no need to lie. I'm just working, baby. That's it. I like the introduction, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I feel you. I like those glasses, by the way. But we'll talk about that another time. Where tomorrows aren't promised. That is the title of your new memoir. Why this book? Why now? I just, I, honestly, I just think that the timing is right to be able to tell that part of the story. Um, I, I think the people that kind of grew up with me, my fan base who, who grew up with me from the day that I, I got drafted up until now, they know, they knew little bits and pieces of that story. But I think, you know, for me to still be tapped into a couple generations, the generation that's in front of me and the generation uh, that's behind me and a younger generation, I just think I need to tell this type of story of, of, of just, what it took for me to be in this situation from surviving uh, to, to, to lack of hope and, 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 and then turning that over to hope. Um, but, I, you know, I just want to give people that that raw authenticity, uh, you know, outlook perspective on me and, and what I had to do to get to where I'm at today. Now, your name is Carmelo Anthony. Everybody knows you as Mello. And if, if, if for those who do know you, you truly can be very, very mellow. Nothing's ever too high. Nothing's ever too low. You seem as even keel as, as, as most people are not. Is that who you truly are? Or is that just a facade that you put forth to get you through some of the tough times that you're going to allude to in this memoir? Yeah, well, it's not it's not a facade. It, it is, you know, that's that's who I am at my core. Right. I, I think my up, my upbringing and what I had to deal with in, in different experiences that I that I had to, you know, go through, uh, it, it made me get to that point where I'm, I'm super mellowed out and just, you know, relax and just I, I would say at peace is a it's a it's a peace. You know, that that's a great feeling to have. Some people call it, you know, too mellow. But I, you know, I say stay mellow at the end, at the end of the day. So it, I had to get to this point. It took a lot of work, you know, for me to get to this point where, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm just at even kill. When do you believe you got to that point where you were even kill, where you were mellow, where you just embraced life if, as what it is, not too high, not too low, and something that you would just pile your way through? When do you believe you got to that point? I would say over the, over the past couple of years. Mm. And, and, and you know, I, I had to really 
you know, experience being out the league and kind of just hitting, you know, rock bottom, you know, so to say, in, in, in personal life, professional life. And I had to experience that. So I had to crawl my way out of that. I had to dig my way out of that, that darkness. So seeing that and, and being a part of that and experiencing that, it seeing the other side of that where I'm at now, I'm definitely at peace, you know, knowing that I knowing what I had to go through and what I experienced. When you went through it, you talk about the 2018, 2019 season, 10 games in the Houston Rockets decide to let you go. You're talking about having questions as to whether or not you were ever going to be in this league again. Did you have questions at any point? as to whether or not you belonged in the league. I didn't, but there's a, and a whole bunch of your, con your contemporaries certainly didn't have those questions about you. But did you have those questions about yourself at that particular moment in time? Nah, I never, I, I never doubted that. Uh, I, I, never, I never thought about should I be in this league or do I, do I still belong in this league? I had to really kind of do the knowledge on the business of the league and the business of, the, of basketball and sports and, you know, people and just – kind of taking it to a, another perspective as, as, you know, than I had before. Before it was just playing basketball and, you know, doing what I do and, you know, being the face of, you know, multiple organizations. You didn't really think too much about anything. So, but now I got a, I got a newfound perspective on just the way that the game is supposed to be played, uh, the business of the game, and just what I want out of it. You know, I, I think I took back control of, of, of my own self and my own game and my own career to a point where I, I can have a different perspective now and, and a new outlook on things. How helpful were some people along the way? And by that, I mean, I'm thinking about a guy like a Russell Westbrook that you played with in Oklahoma City and people keep sleeping on the kind of businessman that he is and some of the big things he's doing off the basketball court as well. You've played with guys like him. Obviously, you've been friends with LeBron James, D. Wade, Chris Paul. You've been in Portland with a guy like Damian Lillard who's been doing big things throughout his career. How helpful were those individuals in helping you reach that point? Well, it was good, but I, you know, I, I, I respect all of those guys for what they bring, you know, and not just on the court, but off the court as well and what they're into, what they're creating. But for me, I, I had to carve out my own lane, and I, I've always felt like that. Even, even since I was younger, I had to carve my own lane and figure out who I was and what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it and doing it my way. Um, and I, I think now – Kind of just having that experience and, you know, being business minded now and seeing things from a different perspective. That's where I'm at, you know. So because I had to do it, because I had to put the work in and do the work and talk to people and, and, and you know, be comfortable with being uncomfortable and vulnerable. That's when I started to really discover who who discover who who truly who really and truly I am. Let me transition to the basketball court because now you are a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. You've been back in the league for a couple of years, clearly reminding everybody of what the hell you can do on the basketball court. So there's no question about that now. Now you've gone from wondering whether you was going to be in the league to being back into the league to get into the postseason to now being on a championship squad with championship expectations. That's the one thing that's eluded you in your entire illustrious career is a trip to the finals and obviously a championship. How are you feeling about being a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, even with everybody saying that y'all are the oldest team in the league, because y'all are. Well, we, I mean, that's a fact. Ain't nobody saying nothing that's not a fact. We, we are. We old as hell, Steve. We, you, <laughs> you know that in, in basketball sense. But I, I just think that what we all bring to the table is, is a wisdom that a lot of people don't have. Like, the way that we're able to, that we're going to be able to come together, hold each other, hold each other accountable, uh, have each other backs. You know, we, we have... We have the most knowledge on this one team than the whole NBA have, I, I, I think. So if we can't put that together and make something work, then that, that's on us. That's, that's not on nobody else. And that's, that's something that, you know, that I'm looking forward to. We all talk about it. We all discuss it. We know what's at stake. We're going to have fun with this journey. We're going to enjoy this, this journey. We're going to embrace it. And I'm, I'm excited to do it, man, because before, if I, if, I had, if I was just to walk away from the game before, then I'd, I'd have been at peace with that. I'd have been cool with that, knowing that, you know, I, I, I tried to win a championship. It just don't work out for everybody. But now that perspective is totally different. Now I have to win. There, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. So I know what that does. I know the pressure that that put on, on, on us as a team, as, as an organization. But what other pressure did you want? What other pressure mm. we want? We want to go out there. We want to target on our back. Is that your way of saying this championship or bust for this Lakers team this year? It got to be. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it have to be. Like, it, there's, there's, no, there's no playing around with that.
Mm. Now, you do know that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are in the same city, in the same arena for the Clippers. And on this side of town that you're very, very familiar with, Brooklyn, New York, there's KD, Kyrie, and James Harden. Some people will look at them and they say, that's what's standing in your way for winning the chip. To that, you say what? Maybe it is. I mean, I, I can't take nothing away from, from what Brooklyn has built and what, what the Clippers has built and what, you know, you can't take away what Milwaukee has done either. You know, so it, everybody's getting better. Nobody's saying it's going gonna, it's gonna to be easy, but this might be one of the most exciting seasons of the NBA in a long time. Mm. A lot of the teams have gotten better. Uh, they, they added pieces to, 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 their, to, their core group of, to their core group of guys. But I'm speaking on I'm speaking on us. I only can speak on on, on what we got to do and what we're going to do. I can't speak on nobody else. Carmelo Anthony, where tomorrow's aren't promised. Bookstores now, Carmelo Anthony. Author Carmelo Anthony. Proud of you, my man. All the best. Look forward to seeing you soon. Love, brother. I appreciate you.